Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. It is that time of the month. Ironically, I am on my period, but no, I'm talking specifically about the time of the month that we read new releases together. I am so excited to be doing this video as I am every month. I feel like I just filmed the June one because all of the June new releases came out at the end of the month and all of the July new releases have come out in the middle of the month. So that's when I'm doing the video. I want to get this to you fresh so that you can maybe make a decision on what book you're going to read. Um, maybe from this list or, you know, I can let you know if any of these are on your TBR, if they're worth your time. So, the three books that I have my eye on, the three books that I am excited about, and the couple of books that I'm actually going to go pick up from Barnes & Noble are Business Casual by B.K. Morrison. I am so hyped for the last book in the Love Light Farm series. I just adore every single one of these. I think that B.K. Morrison has such a beautiful way of writing a small town romance, and I feel like she does such a good job at the chemistry between her heroes and heroines. I'm very excited to dive into Charlie and Nova's book. Also equally as excited about Play Along by Liz Tomford. This one that I had on my radar kind of, but I had heard kind of mixed things about some of the other books in this series. Not that I haven't read any of them. I've read the first two, I believe, but I think the third book got like kind of okay reviews. So anyway, I just like wasn't totally like, oh, I have to rush to pick out this fourth book until I saw so many people on Instagram talking about it. And now I just feel like I have to, right? Good sports romance in my life. And hopefully this one impresses me. And then the other book that I'm going to be picking up from Birds and Noble, Play Along, not one of them since it's an indie, but other one is going to be The Au Pair Affair by Tessa Bailey. I was a little let down by Fangirl Down in February, and I'm hoping that this one redeemed, I don't say redeems Tessa. Um, I hope this one is one of the ones that I can put in the good Tessa Bailey book category. I've had kind of mixed luck with her books um, after reading It Happened One Summer. So those are the books that I'm going to be reading in this video. Super, super excited about it. But before we get into it, I have to tell you about something that I am not as excited about, something that I actively do not like, and that is when scammers try to text and call me, which is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Aura. I'm definitely not the only one who is perpetually inundated with spam calls and texts, and something I've noticed recently is that the, the scammers are really just going that extra mile lately, and whenever I get calls, they are with area codes that I'm familiar with, right? Either like my hometown area code or the area code of where I live right now, and so I'm always wondering if I should pick up the call. I always regret doing it because it's never actually someone that I need to talk to, which is so frustrating. Like, what if I'm waiting for a call from like a doctor or something? We've all been there. And I know one of the reasons I have been getting so many of these spam calls and texts is because big companies just really do not care about keeping our data safe. I don't know if y'all knew, but recently Ticketmaster had a data breach. Love that. And the data of 560 million users put up for sale on the dark web. The data includes full names, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, and credit card data, which at best, you know, I'm going to be getting way more spam calls and texts than usual. And at worst, it's literally going to lead to fraud. So what is Ticketmaster doing about this, you might ask? Literally nothing. They said that they didn't think the hack would have a material impact on our business, which is so frustrating. It's like all of these companies are collecting our data, but they just really don't seem to be very good stewards of it, which is why I use Aura. Aura alerts me when my data has been part of a breach or leaked on the dark web. It gives me really fast fraud alerts too if anyone is trying to use the data that they found on the internet to access like my credit cards, bank accounts, things like that. And it removes my information from data broker websites websites so I get less spam in general, which I love. I also get things like transaction monitoring, a VPN, antivirus, password manager, parental controls, and identity theft insurance, all in one app at one affordable price. If my data was compromised by Ticketmaster, I wouldn't worry about it because Aura is doing the hard work of keeping me safe online. I'm not leaving myself vulnerable to data breaches, and if you don't want to either, you can go to aura.com slash chandlerainsley and try your first two weeks for free, also linked in the description down below. Now let's mosey on over to Barnes & Noble and get this party started this July new release vlog started. All right, friends, I'm back from Friends and Noble and I started on business casual first. Started on. Started in on business casual first. Uh, I'm only 50 pages in. How cool of a snafu with my Pilates class. Anyway, I'm having to like go in an hour earlier than I thought. So that means that I didn't get as far in this as I wanted to before I first updated you. But you know what? It's fine. It is fine. I'm enjoying this. Uh, this book's about Nova and Charlie. Nova is Beckett's little sister. I think his youngest sister, the one that he is closest to. Charlie is Stella's half brother. Beckett and Stella are from like different books in the series if you haven't read it. The 
Flight Farm series is a delightful small town romance series. Couples get together. How fucking terrible of an explanation is that? Y'all, my brain is mush today. But this book kind of opens up on Stella's wedding to Luca. Just super sweet. It is at Love Light Farms. Essentially, Nova propositions Charlie and is like, hey, I know you've been flirting with me. I know you've been into me. I know I haven't really been reciprocating those advances, but would you like to go home with me? And he is like kind of confused by her request. He's like, what is bringing this on in you? Because every time I've ever flirted with you in the past, you have no interest in me and you basically tell me to fuck off. Like what is, what's changed? And this like embarrasses her, I guess. She doesn't really understand why, not rejecting her, but she is surprised, I guess, by his response. And she's embarrassed. She walks away and is basically like, eh, I'm never going to ask you this again. He wants her to, like he is into her as well, but he's just like, a little confused at the situation. Anyway, that's the opening of this book. And I think we also have more of a setup and more of a reason for Charlie to be in town because everybody basically in this series, for the most part, lives in this small town or they're visiting for some reason. I think there was a heroine in one of the other books who comes to town because she's like a travel blogger. That's a like quaint, charming small town. Uh, Charlie, again, because his sister like lives in this town, comes often, but he lives in a big city and he is in finance. So very different than Nova, who's trying to open up her own tattoo shop in Goldwild, I believe is the name of the little town. Town that everybody lives in. Is this the Inglewild series? I don't know. Anyway, Charlie sends Stella and Luca off to a honeymoon. He like pays for a month long European honeymoon for them, which is so sweet. I think it's maybe Italy or something. I don't know. It's in Europe. And someone's going to come for me in the comments and be like, it's not all the same. I know. Thank you so much. He sends them away. He is going to run the farm for a little while. And I'm assuming that proximity is going to mean that he's going to come into contact more often with Nova. And they're probably going to hook up. It's called Business Casual. He has helped her actually set up her own business. So I'm wondering if that's going to become part of the thing, like part of their relationship or going to come in again as like, you know, something there. Plus casual hookups, business casual. I don't know. I don't know. It's cute. It's cute. Obviously not that far. I am excited to get further in this, but first I gotta go stretch myself out on a reformer. I'll be back. Hello besties. I made it to Pilates. <laughs> it was like an unexpectedly weird class. No reformer involved. I was just like standing on some spiky balls and stretching my feet out and other parts of my body. It was fine. This book is what I was expecting and it is quite good. <laughs> Obviously. Is it obvious? The propositioning from Nova to Charlie does end up getting fulfilled, I suppose. Uh, we do have a hookup pretty early on, I would say, in the book. Not like immediately, but before the 50% mark, which may or may not work for you. I feel like it normally doesn't work for me. It's not not working for me here. It's not like my favorite, but it's not, you know, not terrible. But I think a big part of that is Charlie's character. Something about his attitude just totally works for me. He has ADHD and he's just like a total golden retriever. He reminds me a lot of Hayden just in his like temperament, his ability and like willingness to help people, all of that. I just like, I'm really charmed by him. And Nova, I really relate to and her like perfectionism. It's just like, it's a good time. I like seeing these two kind of misunderstand each other and try to figure each other out. It feels very realistic, not in a miscommunication way, but just in a very like human way. I think they're, they want this pretty charming. So in the scene that I just read, we had Charlie actually going to one of Nova's like family dinners because Charlie is friends with Beckett, Nova's older brother. There's sort of a misunderstanding about, I guess like the tattoo shop, I guess like Nova is having a little bit of insecurity around it. Like it feels like she needs to impress her older brother and she's worried that like he's, like nothing that she does is going to live up to his expectation, which isn't true. Like he's very supportive, but I just, I like it. I love the charming small town aspects. When I first started the book, I, w I will say I was kind of not having a hard time getting into it, but I, I wasn't feeling as like wowed instantly as I have with some of the other books in this series. But I think something about the Google Wild like charm just really draws you in. The phone tree that they have, the recurring cast of characters, like this does have Gilmore Girls-esque vibes. Not necessarily this, book in particular, but the series as a whole, which I really, I really like, I really vibe with. Yeah, it's just like everything I wanted it to be, and it gives like perfect fall vibes. Each of the books in the series kind of represents a different season, and I believe this one is also set in the fall, which is really sweet. I wish I were reading this for the first time in the fall, honestly. I'm still enjoying it and I am going to continue it. So it's a good time. Like I wish I had more to say, but it's just one of those books where you pick it up and you're like, yep, this is good. It's what I expected it to be. It is solid. I don't know if this is like feeling five-star material to me. I think it'll really all come down to the sort of like emotional heart of the story. I can see little threads and I'm just wondering how they're all going to be sewn together. You know, I like some of the things that are happening with Nova and Charlie's characters, but it depends on how that's like all pulled off at the end. So I'll report back when I'm finished. I am going to go take the inaugural soak in my new bathtub. <laughs> So, wish me luck. I'm, I am I can express how excited I am. If you don't follow me on the vlog channel, you're missing out, but um, we are currently undergoing a bathroom renovation. It actually kind of hit a snag, but basically testing out our new bathtub to make sure everything like is working well before they do some more work in there. But I've literally dreamed of this. Every time I get stressed, every time I've gotten stressed, ever since like 
agreeing to do this renovation i literally just center myself and i imagined myself in my bathtub i'm like actually like i'm actually about to get in this bathtub i know it seems silly but i'm so fucking excited i'll be back i'll be back tomorrow hello bestie friends i am sitting down to do my makeup and we can talk about some romance together shall we i don't know where the country accent's coming from i've had people with jackhammers in my house all day demoing the tile they just installed incorrectly uh so i've been reading but i haven't been talking to you about it because you know what i value your eardrums you know specifically if you've got headphones on that would have been a nightmare right me talking and then just hearing bang 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 let's talk shall we okay business casual i finished it i enjoyed it y'all i thought it was a really cute book and i really enjoyed the relationship dynamic between Nova and Charlie. It was just really nice seeing two characters who really felt well suited, who felt like they complemented each other's personalities pretty well, which is weird to say considering my one complaint about this book is I wanted there to be more relationship development, like more time spent between the two characters. It feels nitpicky to say that because it's not like there's a ton missing from this book. It's not like there was no chemistry or they didn't belong together, but I do sort of feel like it would have been better if there were just like a couple more scenes of like romance without the sexin, because the sexin was quite present in this book. And I will point that out because I feel like if you've read anything from this author before, you might be surprised at how much sex is in this book and how graphic the sex is. It's not like, you know, raunchy, dirty, hardcore smut. <laughs> um, I mean, this is not like haunting Adeline, you know, novelty type stuff. The C word is used. Cock. That was surprising to me given that she doesn't normally name parts in her books, right? Like she has sex scenes, but um, it's a little bit more euphemistic. And in this book, that wasn't really the case. There were a lot of sex scenes and I think they were well employed. Like I do think it fit their relationship, but it's not, it's not always going to be my favorite kind of story, right? If that's going to be like the main thing bringing two people together. I wanted there to be just a little bit more subtlety, shall we say, kind of in that arena. I wouldn't even say subtlety but I just, I would have preferred a little bit more coziness. That being said, again, uh, the ending of this book I thought was really sweet. I feel like it worked for this particular couple. I feel like often in books, when you've got like a grovel or you've got a third act breakup or you've got some sort of conflict, I feel like sometimes that's when relationships can go off the rails and feel incongruous with the characters and the relationship that's being built, right? Like, you have a conflict just for the sake of having one and it doesn't really fit the characters. In this book, I think the conflict fit really well. It wasn't overly dramatic. It felt very true to life and the resolution of that, this thing that happens at the end of the book where a lot of the characters come together, one of the people in the couple is very sweet. It's very sweet. It was very life affirming and delightful and I really enjoyed it. Again, I just think there's like something honestly kind of intangible that I can't put my fingers on that make this not a five-star read. Like, it's definitely four-star material. It was very, very sweet. I really enjoyed it, um, but there's just something missing, and I think it's okay. I think if we're looking at the series as a whole, I think I've given two five stars and two four stars, and that feels really good. Like, I can say with 100% certainty that this is a series I think that you should pick up, and I think these books are just really, really solid. I also think that depending on you and the kinds of characters you relate to, this could be definitely a five-star read for people. I don't think that there's anything, like, objectively missing from the story. Just, I don't know, I was looking for something just a little deeper maybe, a little bit more conversation, a little bit more. I still really liked it. I still thought it was pretty freaking fabulous and I was not let down at all by it. I wasn't disappointed, so I enjoyed it. Good times had by all, well, good times had by me, I suppose. Let's talk about The Au Pair Affair by Tessa Bailey, which has been surprising me. 50% <laughs> in, I again got 50% in because, you know, jackhammers, but they're gone now, so we can chat and I can vlog, update you more frequently <laughs> for this book and play along, which I'm reading after this one, obviously. So The Au Pair Affair is about our two main characters Tallulah and Burgess, which, you know, names for sure. Uh, they are characters that we meet in the first book in the series, Fangirl Down, and I did not have the best luck with Fangirl Down. I only came out like a couple of months ago, which is kind of crazy. I think it was in February. Hats off to Tessa, I guess, for writing so quickly, but this one is about a, I think, is it she a marine biologist? I don't know, she's some sort of science bitch, and she is going to school and is needing a place to live in Boston. She's going to grad school. She's, like, in her late 20s, 26, 27. She gets basically, like, hooked up with this guy. Not hooked up, but, like, hey, do you need a place to live? I know a guy who needs a live-in nanny for his 12-year-old daughter. You can live with him. It's a friend recommendation, like, a friend of a friend kind of hooks her up with the situation. At the beginning of the book, she tries to, like, get out of it before it even <laughs> occurs. She's, like, at this smoothie shop before her, like, move-in day with this guy, uh, who's a hockey player, I should say, and she's like, you know what? I just don't know if I really want to be in this situation. Like, this does not seem... Like, I don't know this guy. I, I don't know if I really want to do this, like, live with a strange man and his daughter, even though she, like, knows the guy enough, I guess, and she does know his daughter. He, she's had, like, interactions with them before agreeing to live with them. She takes some convincing, actually, and, like, after a series of events of her 
trying to find a different apartment, whatever. She winds up right back where she started living with this guy. So they strike up a bit of a friendship and kind of a mutually beneficial relationship there. Um, obviously, like, she's working for him in a sense, like, you know, helping with his daughter and he is helping her as kind of like a, almost like a fake boyfriend a little bit and also going on little, like, friendshipy dates around the city with her. That's like what they're doing in the scene that I just read. It's sort of hard to define because this book I don't think is like the most well, I don't want to say it's not well paced, but the plot of this book is um, a little all over the place and that's kind of the same as Fangirl Down. The book is less focused on getting you to a certain, you know, conflict or getting you to a certain point and is more just about these two people living in a city. Um, in that way, I think it's kind of reminiscent of a lot of like KU sports romances, like that kind of don't really have a point, but are just fun to read. <laughs> Honestly, all that's really happened so far is that there has been like a makeout situation between uh, Tallulah and Burgess, and then they're not pretending it didn't happen. They're still flirting, but they're not like moving their relationship forward necessarily besides these little like friendshipy dates around the city. I don't know. He's trying to like avoid injury as he's getting older. He's like 37 and he's, you know, a professional hockey player and trying to make sure that he stays in good shape. I think he gets like injured at some point and she's giving him olive oil massages. It's, it's a good book. It's, it's, here's the thing. I like it better than Fangirl Down, not because the plot's really any better. In fact, I think that's what's setting this apart from something like It Happened One Summer. Like, It Happened One Summer worked so well because Piper was, like, undergoing a character transformation and, you know, there was an actual, like, point to the book almost. Like, she's going from one place to another in terms of her personality and, like, what she's trying to accomplish. So, I think that made it an even better story plus the romance. This one doesn't have that, but I'm liking this one better than Fangirl Down because the heroine's not annoying. The heroine in Fangirl Down is one of the worst that I've read and I think that's why I really hated that book. You know, I appreciated the heroine's enthusiasm in that book, but it wasn't something I found relatable on any, on any level. She was kind of insufferable and, like, irritating and I understood her passion for golf or whatever, but it was just a little bit cringy. Um, the heroine in this one, she doesn't really care about hockey and so she's not like obsessed with the hero from day one. Um, in fact, she kind of is scared of him initially. That's part of the reason she doesn't want to move in with him in the first place is like, is this hockey player? He's a bit of a bruiser and she's like, I, you know, are you like this in real life? Like, I'm not trying to get beat up. And um, he obviously puts those fears to rest, but you know, that is definitely, I feel like more realistic than uh, the heroine in the last book. I don't know. I just, I, I'm liking this one more because it feels realistic. The hero too is not over the top in any respect. Like he is a little bit grumpy but he's not over the top grumpy like some of the heroes in other Tessa Bailey books. He's not overly commandeering. You know, he's still got that like jealous streak and does have that like macho man thing because I mean, it's a Tessa Bailey book. That's kind of her thing. Hyper masculine men, but it's not irritating me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Well executed in this book um, and well executed in the sense that it's not pissing me off, not well executed necessarily in that I think this is going to be, again, a five star, like amazing romance, but like I'm having a good enough time with it that I don't, I don't super care. Here's the thing. I don't expect, I don't really ever expect to have a five star romance to be to be 100%. Um, it's few and far between that romance impresses me enough to give me, uh, you know, a five-star experience. That makes it sound like I don't expect romances to be five-star material. I love romance. I love romance, but I'm picky, okay? And I know what I'm looking for, and oftentimes romances are good or great, but they're not perfect, and that's okay. Um, this one I wasn't expecting to be any of those things, actually. I was kind of just, like, unsure because I didn't like Fangirl Down. This one is um, impressing me, but I don't think it's going to be five-star material, and that is just fine. I'm excited to get to the sex scenes because Tessa Bailey always uh, impresses in that regard, but yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this story. Like, having a good time with it, but I don't think that this is going to be a five star. I don't know why I am over explaining this, y'all. My brain is clearly rotted. The record, I feel sick. I was sick last week and I'm feeling sick again today. I have no idea what's happening to me. Everybody pray. Don't actually do that. I'll let you know when I have more to say about books and uh, when I finish this one. Hello, folks. Gonna move the fast food napkins. It's been a time since we last spoke. I finished this book and I've started not play along. I've started my period. Not exactly thriving over here. I have like chest pain from the bar classes I've been doing plus period pain. I'm very excited to get in bed with my heating pad in a little bit. You know, I don't know. I love, I actually do love being a woman. I don't love periods. I do love my heating pad. Me and her like this. Let's talk about this. I don't know how to read this book. I think I liked it more than Fangirl Down. I know I did because I liked the heroine in this one a lot more. I really need to emphasize the amount of directionlessness I feel with this series. I just don't feel like any of the books have really strong plots or anything really like tying the books together. I mean, like, not that they need to be like tied together in, in the series, you know what I mean? But what's the point of it all, right? Like our heroine and our hero are falling in love, which is like cool, I guess. But the heroine isn't really like 
like growing a lot like she has some things she needs to work on i don't know that she really like had this big transformation it's definitely not a piper situation you know and the hero i guess kind of like learns that hockey isn't his everything or whatever as he's like aging and his body is starting to break down which is good you know like he's good for something else i guess which in this case is dick i just i don't know it, it, there wasn't the plot was not that interesting you know i wasn't really that invested in seeing them get together and like i don't know there wasn't that like desperate chemistry that i was just like oh like please fuck in my mind in my heart in my soul i'm feeling like this is a three star but i'm pretty sure i gave fangirl down three stars and that just doesn't really feel right but i don't know if i'm really feeling like four or five star material with this definitely not five star probably not four star either so it's fine i'm glad that i read it i enjoyed parts of it i don't think this is something that like you have to rush out and go buy if you were let down by fangirl down <laughs> i think you'll probably enjoy this more but i don't think you should expect it didn't happen one summer sort of situation here i did notice though at the beginning of this book how many fucking books this woman has written and you know what tessa bailey hats off to you like that's an insane backlist and i'm wondering if i should like try to read some of these you know some of the ones that are not as popular or the ones that are getting republished i think i have like four or five in the romancing the clarkson series too hot to handle too wild to tame i would love at some point to do like a guide to tessa bailey but i don't know if i'm gonna get too burnt out on her like titty sucking heroes you know it's like i know he's not paying attention and then he hears me say shit like that and he's like excuse me yeah i like legitimately was not and then i just heard you say titty sucking heroes is that something you can personally relate to no okay I'm gonna move on to play along though. I keep seeing good things about it from my friends who I know have good taste. And then I just saw someone I follow on TikTok. Kelly really liked this. Not this one. Play along. Apparently everybody's gagging for it. And I'm so excited. Like I hope this is another um I literally can't remember the name of the second book in the series that I love so much. But hopefully it's a repeat of that in terms of like enjoyment because I need that. Like these two books have been great, don't get me wrong. I mean, this is casual and this have been like, you know, good good releases not not pissing me off but can i get a five star i'd love that because i can tell that my my cramps are just going to be really popping for the rest of the day um i need to go get paint we do get beautiful background noise pepper is eating his dinner mm, he's back there somewhere anyway not even my period cramps can prevent me from the joy i'm feeling this shit was tailor made for me y'all play along it's so good i'm 20 percent in uh this book is about isaiah and kennedy who isaiah fondly calls kenny At the beginning of the book we are lovingly introduced to this idea that our hero is enamored with our heroine from day one but she is engaged to someone else and three years later she is now single she's kind of going through a lot of changes in her life and after a drunken night of fun in vegas they end up married to each other of course and normally i'm not super into the married in vegas marriage of inconvenience sort of situation i don't hate it i don't like you know always roll my eyes but most of the time i think it's executed pretty poorly but this is so great like this is so fun i love kennedy's character she is very no nonsense very type a straight laced and isaiah is not only really like fun and life of the party but he's also a very genuine person who has had really challenging things happen to him in his life his mom passed away when he was younger that has really stayed with him a while he has ptsd it seems from that experience constantly checking in on the people around him to make sure that they're being safe because he doesn't want um, anyone else to get into any sort of like accident because i think his mom died in a car accident just been obsessed with kennedy and has been looking for an opportunity to like get with her and he does not really initiate the marriage um kennedy like basically begs him and, like who is he to say no to the love of his life so now they are married and instead of getting an annulment or anything they're going to pretend to stay together or like pretend to be married because um she doesn't want to get fired from her job as the team physician he's a baseball player he's a shortstop and she is a physician works for the team but she's not treated as well as she should be um, by the team doctor and that's like something that happens in the prologue of the book but it's just very very well executed and that is the key to success with romance there are no new ideas under the sun generally speaking when it comes to storytelling you can dress up fantasy in you know different magic systems or whatever but like fantasy share similarities which honestly has been circulating on threads a lot recently we're talking about how sarah j mass is like the originator of fantasy and then people are like the bitch didn't invent dragons like y'all are crazy don't think there are very many new and fresh and original concepts that I read in romance, especially as someone who reads it often. It's more about how you execute on the chemistry between the characters and on the the tropes, right? Not every romance needs to have a million tropes, but if you're going to do them, do them right, and this book does them right. I think you can't really fail, to be honest, if you're going to have the hero just absolutely obsessed with the heroine. And I say that. I think the last book that I was reading too, the Tessa Bailey, like technically he's obsessed with her as well, but this one just does it so much better. I love it. I think it's great. I'm going to try to get not try to. I'm gonna get 50% in while I take bath. My relaxing, relaxing bath. I'm clean. It's the next day though, actually. I'm sitting down to do my makeup. Again, you know, I do this every day. 
shocking, surprising. Let's talk though. Let's talk about Play Along because I'm farther than 50% in. I'm like 70% into this book and I'm eating it up. It's so good. It's so good. I feel like I don't really have anything profound to say about this one considering I gushed about it in the last clip and honestly, still loving it still really enjoying it. I really think that Liz Tomford has just continued to grow as an author. Today I'm really impressed that this book isn't a million pages long. Like, she consistently writes really great romance, but my one complaint, my one consistent complaint has been that every book is like 600 pages. This one's under 400 and she's nailing it. Like, I don't think we need a ton more page time to establish this romance or to kind of understand why these two should be together. It's just perfectly paced. Love sunscreen on my lips. Deeply romantic. I am obsessed with Isaiah. He is like the perfect man. Give the girls what they want. Give us the wish fulfillment. You know, I think I think we've gone kind of far in the other direction lately with trying to make heroes too realistic, and sometimes I don't want that. Most of the time, I don't want that. I am reading a romance. I don't think that wanting to be wooed or wanting a truly good man is a fantasy necessarily, but... I don't mind if my romance is a little bit unrealistic in some regards, right? Like, I want the emotions to be genuine and the emotions to feel like ones that I could have in real life and the characters to go through things that I could go through in real life. But I don't think it's a bad thing to make the hero so perfect and delicious. The hero in this book, just everybody clap. Everybody clap. And it's, it's fun comparing him to some of the other heroes that this author has written to you because, you know, she really does write unique heroes. Like, they're not all the same, which I can really appreciate. I think sometimes authors, <coughs> Emily Henry, um, and fall into the trap of, like, writing the same characters over and over again, um, with just, like, slight variations in their heroines. And in this book, like, I really feel like the hero is just so different than other ones that she's written, and I love him, right? Okay? And Shay was also great, but he had, like, that grumpy hero thing going on, right? This guy doesn't. He's not grumpy. He's just a fucking nice guy, and he's got some trauma, and I love him, okay? I do. I love Isaiah. I think he's perfect. And I honestly don't know what the conflict of the story is going to be at this point because they just seem perfect for each other. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be the fact that the heroine is trying to get a job in a different city, but I just can't. I just can't with how much I like this book, y'all. It's kind of upsetting me. Not really. I needed a five star, like, in a desperate big way. And this one's really, like, just providing everything that I need from a story. So oh, I'm really realizing this is not the right bra to wear with this shirt. This looks so stupid. Well, if I sit up, it's not so bad, but the Skims t-shirt bra or whatever... Is it? No. Fits everybody, bra. Does it really fit everybody? I don't believe so. I'm gonna finish my makeup, okay? I, I'm i gonna try to collect my thoughts and feelings as I finish this book so I can really give you my... Mm. It, but you've gotten it, you know what I mean? Like, you've gotten it because it's just that good. <laughs> all right, y'all. This is easily the best book of July for me. It really just ticked all of my boxes and what I'm looking for in a contemporary romance, right? Uh, we've got hot sports player who's obsessed with his wife, who's been pining for her for forever. We've got heroine who is career-minded and career-oriented and maybe a little bit cold, but has some things that she wants to work through, um, mostly through touching on her husband. We also have a really great cast of side characters who we are familiar with from other books who come in and really make an impact on the characters, whether that is just like as emotional support or as uh, comedic relief. We've got, I mean, literally like you name it, this book's got it. Great tropes, great page length, everything about this I loved. I just really, I gotta, I gotta rely on the internet more often. You know, it's like my job to read things and to tell you what's worth your time. And yet half the time I'm relying on the internet to do the same for me before I even like make these videos. So, hats off to everybody on Instagram who has been like reading this I guess early release or right when it came out um, and, and telling me or telling everybody that it's good because you know I read it and I loved it and it was so good it was so good it was exactly what I needed I didn't want to have another one of these videos where it's like yeah the books are like pretty good and you could pick them up but uh, June and July actually have been pretty kind to me considering I read Not in Love I believe last month as well romance is in a good state I think you know there's a lot of bullshit out there there are some really good gems as well and honestly I had such a fun time with this video I would recommend obviously this book like you got to pick it up especially if you thought maybe some of her other books were too long this one's nice and short and sweet, less than 400 pages. Also, I think the au pair affair is like kind of worth it if you're into Tessa Bailey, like it's a fun book and business casual, of course. Although I would say again, I would maybe wait until fall time for that one just because I think it has like really good fall vibes and I don't know, I feel like I don't know very many romances that are coming out this fall. I feel like most romances get released in the summer. Most of the big, big name ones like the Emily Henry stuff like that. So, you know, Who's, who's to say what's gonna come out then? I don't know, maybe maybe wait on Business Casual. Buy it now, read it later. You know what I mean? I had so much fun with this. I love y'all so much. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.